Hey everyone, I'm Mitra and today in this video we're going to talk about when word embeddings go berserk. Uh, we're going to specifically talk about bias and not just usual tendency and bias that we have every day in our lives, but it's about the bias that we have in the artificial intelligence and the machines that we're building for our future. It's a bias that is from our past and is being amplified into our future. And at the end, we'll answer this question that if there was a robot uprising, would robots be able to destroy us? Would they be able to defeat us with the things and the knowledge that they have? We're going to talk about this and so many other questions. But before we start, let me just thank all you guys who reached out to me, supported me, and also shared your own journey with me. Uh, I'm really grateful for every and each one of you. Thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you. But if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get to the main point. The whole idea of this video and also whether or not machines can have a big influence or impact on our lives uh, came into my mind when I was going through one of the Andrew and Jay's courses on sequence modeling. During the course, I came across one specific paper. It was called uh, Man to Computer Programmer is like woman to homemaker. And the first time I saw the title of this paper, I was like, what? Dude, what does it even mean? Man to computer programmer and woman to homemaker? And I was a little bit confused, but I said, okay, let's just see what Professor Andrew and Jay has to say about this. So I watched that video and I guess it was about five minutes. I got the intuition, but I really couldn't dive deep into the uh, subject itself. So what I did was that I said, okay, um, Andrew always says that if you don't get something, it doesn't matter. You can just go on and code it for yourself later on. But I said, no, let's just dive a little bit deeper and see what the authors of these papers have to say. So I started researching. I went on the internet, uh, read about the main paper, read some other papers, and also blogs and other explanations that people had to say about this specific subject. And after doing all that research, here I am with a lot of knowledge to share with you guys. First, machines are like babies. So just like how we watch our parents to imitate their behavior and learn as best as we can, Machines are just the same. They try to understand what is right and what is wrong. So if we uh, jump out of the window and land three floors uh, below, if we put ourselves on fire or knock someone's head off and then smile after, if the machines watch us, they'll probably think that we're doing something right and found the process virtuous and an amazing deed. And this is exactly or maybe a little bit milder case with how machines are trying to learn from us. Because we program them in a way to understand us as best as possible, they try to get out and understand every and each nuance in our behavior, in our language, or even in our mindsets, no matter how outdated or uh, wrong they may be. And that is why sometimes machines, just like kids, learn some things that we really don't want them to, like some biases or some uh, beliefs that are not particularly uh, instructive or the best thing that we can give our children. To clarify this point a little bit more and understand the importance of bias and the mindset of our machines, let's just say that we built a robot that is going to interact with people. Well, we put this robot inside a room with a white woman, a white man, and also an African-American boy. We trained this robot on uh, large corpuses of text from Google, from history books, or anything that we could uh, access. And we didn't even change a thing in it. We didn't uh, like modify its mindset or behavior. Uh, so what would happen if this robot handed the white man a beer to enjoy himself and the woman a laundry detergent, use the N-word to be friendly with the African-American and guide him to the fields for harvesting cotton? Well, it would be a little bit creepy, right? You may say that situations like this are imaginary and won't ever happen. And also robots are cute little creatures that are going to serve the humankind in present and future. 
But in fact, if you do a little bit of research, you find out about so many disasters that came along because of this bias that we had in our machines. Like how Google, back in 2015, recognized and tagged some African Americans as gorillas. And also how Google, back in 2016, uh, thought that all the Muslims support terrorism and not report it. So it would correct anyone who would search Muslims report terrorism. And also, how our search engines are showing women less uh, high-paying and more lower-paying jobs. In the main paper that uh, we talked about in this video, the authors actually try to address some biases like gender biases, uh, the racial discriminations, and everything, every belief actually, that would pigeonhole people into certain groups and would stop them from, for example, aspiring to the careers that they want or even like simply be uh, offensive to them. But in order to understand the solution that the authors gave, we have to first understand the problem. Well, first we have to ask a rudimentary question. How do even machines and computers understand what we say, what we do and how they recognize us even? How do they learn from us? Well, the answer differs in different fields. Well, in, for example, object detection, we give our algorithms, our machines, different images. And with those images, the computer can understand, for example, that a face is round. And with all the pixels and all the colors represented in numbers, it can understand that, for example, a face is a round or like white circle that has two brown circles in the middle. So it can learn that a face has these features by the pictures or the data that we give it. And this is actually the case with voice and audio recognition. For example, when you talk to your phone and say, hey, Google, how can it understand that you're talking to it or using a trigger word for it to turn on? Well, the thing that your computer or the algorithm behind your mobile does is that it recognizes different waves and the patterns in your speech and therefore can understand that, for example, it has to turn on. But this is actually not the case with understanding human language. Like, uh, if we want our computer to understand what we say, like when we talk about a cat, can it really understand what a cat looks like or what even uh, the word means by looking at the letters? Does any value come out of the three letters C, A, and T? Well, no, because if we like rearrange the word and form the word act, we can get another verb, actually a word, that has a total different meaning with cat. So there's no relationship between the letters and each word. So scientists had to find out new and better ways of telling the computer what each word means. So this is why some things like word embeddings have emerged and are being used today as the main tool for uh, natural language processing. And a brief and quick explanation is that word embeddings are things like a vector of numbers, a series actually of numbers, that can represent different aspects of one word with digits. Like if we have a word like cat, the quality of being animal is high in this word, or the quality of cuteness will be high because we know that cats are cute. Well, you may wonder how these words and numbers or digits are appearing in these vectors. Well, they all come from sentences. Because scientists couldn't say uh, what the word, for example, cat means by the letters in the word cat, they tried to use something else rather than the word. They used sentences or context that one word is used in. So they gave their algorithms hundreds of millions of words and sentences and with the combination of all these sentences they could come up with a good explanation for each word. If you want to know more about word embeddings you can check out my other video that I'll link in the description below. So back in 2013 Thomas Mikolov and his team actually made an algorithm called Word2Vec 
to help them come up with these vectors that would represent different words in digits and numbers. Let's just dive a little bit deeper and see what word to vec is and how it works. It's me, Mitra. And I'm really cool, but I don't know how to act like one cool person. Just be that great and have that great influence so it can really uh, destroy your future. No, it can't. But I'm just destroying myself by not knowing what to say. <laughs> yeah. Also, thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> Let's just start talking about it. I'm really bad at talking. Oh my goodness. I'm really bad at talking, but it doesn't matter because I can do it. I don't know. Do I know? Maybe. Okay, that's fine. With this and all the other things, but before we start, let me just thank you all, thank all you guys.